Hello, and welcome to my channel. Let's go. Coffee at home is great. You know if you don't have an espresso machine, uh, you're not going to be making any espresso. And you're okay with that. Pour overs are great. Chai, however, seems to be a little bit more of an elusive creature. So let's talk about it. Making it at home can be a bit uh, underwhelming um, when compared to chais that you get in a coffee shop that are specifically designed to have more sweetness, more spice, to kind of counteract uh, the milk that's going into it that will perhaps dilute or stretch out the flavor. So sans breaking down and buying one of those uh, concentrates from like Trader Joe's or something, I'm gonna give you my recipe for how I make chai from loose leaf tea. Uh, bear in mind, it's not gonna be the same as you find in a coffee shop, but uh, you made it and it's, it's good, so. All right. I've worked in several different cafes and I've been to a lot of coffee shops and most of them are using a syrup that's been processed to have more spice and sweetness than you'd normally find brewing from loose leaf tea. So this recipe, this take on chai is definitely gonna be more mild, but um, attune your palate and you'll find it to be quite delectable. Uh, what? What exactly is in a chai? One moment. Chai is a black tea uh, with a mixture of aromatic herbs and spices. Cardamom is the most com common ingredient, followed by a mixture of cinnamon, ginger, star anise, and cloves. Pepper, coriander, nutmeg, and fennel are also used but are less common. The first thing you're you'll obviously want to figure out is what chai you like best. Um, that brand is going to be specific to you. I do recommend brewing from loose leaf as you can also control how much more of the tea mixture you want to use. I personally have been using this brand. As you see there, I've used a good portion of it up. So check it out if you want. Step one double your recipe uh, with an eight ounce cup in mind. This is not an eight ounce cup. This is more like a six ounce cup. If you normally use one tea bag per cup, uh, use two. Likewise, two teaspoons of, of tea. Use four. Uh, again, you can do more if you like a really strong chai. Uh, however, I find that just doubling the recipe is sufficient. Step Two, sugar in this case is a very good friend to the chai. First specialty shop I worked at, um, they brewed their chai concentrate from a loose leaf and we mixed a whole bunch of sugar in with it. And at the time I thought it was too much sugar. I was like, wow, this is a lot of sugar. I tried the concentrate before and after adding the sugar and I was surprised that after adding all that sugar, you know, mixing it all up, integrating the sugar into the, the hot concentrate, that it really brought out the spices of the chai so much more than without the sugar. So normally I drink my tea just straight, no, no sugar, no sweetness. But for chai, I actually do add a bit of sugar. My go-to is honey, just because I feel like honey is, I don't know, just feels better to me, more natural maybe. I add a little bit more than I normally would if I was just drinking it, like say by itself without milk. Step number three, half your water. Don't fill the whole cup with water when you're brewing your tea because obviously you have to brew the tea first before you actually make a latte. So I'll fill the cup up with this, brew my tea, I generally don't brew it any more than the recommended brew time, which is about four minutes for chai, uh, because 
I want it to be strong, but I don't want it to be bitter. And brewing it for too long can kind of make it bitter, which I've made that mistake before. Half the amount of water, same amount of brewing time, is a good rule of thumb. Also, a secondary tip, if you want, which I, I found makes a subtle difference, but not too crazy, is agitating the tea leaves as it's brewing either consistently or in the beginning and at the end uh, because it, that agitation again extracts more flavor. Step four. We are coming back to step four because I don't have a frother yet. I ordered one from Amazon and I'm waiting for that. That to be continued was unnecessary. I'm right here. Um, I was actually waiting for a new frother so that I can uh, have some properly aerated frothed milk so that the chai latte could be complete. I just, I washed this. Step four. Now that you have your tea concentrate, it's time to heat up your milk and uh, froth it if you have a frother. If you don't have a frother, you can just add milk like normal, like a normal tea. Uh, it tastes the same, but the feel and the texture of frothed milk is something special and I think it adds to the overall f effect of whatever latte you're making, whether it be chai or non-chai. This is a, a frother I got on Amazon and I like the fact that it is rechargeable. It feels substantial. This is a, a lot bigger of a um, mixer frother head than on my previous frother. So that's it. You heat up your, your milk in a pot like I, I do and you put your frother in there. Voila, you have yourself a latte. Um, you can top it with cinnamon, cocoa, whatever you want, whatever floats your boat. And that's it. That's, that's your basic chai latte. Try it out. Let me know what you think. Like I said, it's, it's definitely going to be a lot more mild than in a cafe, but I think it's going to be pretty good and, and maybe less, uh, I don't know what I'm saying, less processed. Anyway, that's the way I do my chais. Um, and I'm out. That's it. Thanks for coming to my kitchen. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And of course, I will be seeing you.